may I request the three refuges? Yes, I'll pray. Begin with the homage. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa. Homage to the blessed teacher, the arahant, the perfectly all awakened one. Buddhang saranang gachami, dhammang saranang gachami, sangang saranang gachami. I go to the Buddha as a refuge. I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. I go to the Sangha as a refuge. Dutiyampi buddhang saranang gachami. Dutiyampi dhammang saranang gachami. Dutiyampi sanghang saranang gachami. For a second time, I go to the Buddha as a refuge. For a second time, I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. For a second time, I go to the Sangha as a refuge. Tatiyampi buddhang saranang gachami. Tatiyampi dhammang saranang gachami. Tatiyampi sanghang saranang gachami. For a third time, I go to the Buddha as a refuge. For a third time, I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. And for a third time, I go to the Sangha as a refuge. And now the virtues. Panati pata veramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from hurting living beings on purpose. Adina dana veramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from taking what is not given. Kame sumi chachara veramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from sexual misconduct. Musa wada we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from false speech. Sura miraya majja pamma dhatana we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from mind-altering substances. These were the five virtues. Now, continue with the eight. Vikala bhojana veramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from eating at improper times. Nacha gita vadita visukha dasana mala gandha vilepana dharna mandana vibhusana tana veramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from dancing, singing, listening to music, seeing entertainment shows, wearing necklaces, perfumes, and beautifying the body with cosmetics. Ucha sayana maha sayana we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from high and luxurious beds and seats. Silena sugatinyanti, silena bhoga sampada. Silena nibhutinyanti, tasama sila visodaye. By virtue, a good life is obtained. By virtue, spiritual wealth comes to be. By virtue, one is unbinded. This virtue is to be perfected. Sad, sad.
And now the Buddha, the Dhamma, and Sangha Vandana, which I will recite only in Pali this morning, but they are in the sutta that I will be reading in English. So you can have another reminder there. Iti piso bhagava araham samma sambuddho vija charana sampanno sugato lo kavidu Anuttaro puri sadhamma sarati sattha deva manusanam buddho bhagavati Swatato bhagavata dhammo sanditi ko akaliko Ehi pasiko panayiko pachatang veditabo in yuhiti. Supati panno bhagavato savaka sango. Uju pati panno bhagavato savaka sango. Nyaya pati panno bhagavato savaka sango. Sami chipati panno bhagavato savaka sango. Yadirang chattari purisa yugani yatta purisa pugala. Esa bhagavato savaka sango. Ahuneyo pahuneyo dakhineyo anjalikaraniyo. Enutirang punya ke tang lo kasati. And this morning I will be reciting to you a sutta that is called the Vibanga Sutta, and this is Vibanga means exposition or explanation and this is about the Eightfold Path. This is uh, piece by piece the Eightfold Path and this is a wonderful sutta to, to know and remember. Once in Sawati the Buddha addressed the monks <clears throat> Monks, this eight-spoke path is wise. This will I <clears throat> that I will explain and break down to you. Listen carefully and apply your mind to what I will say. Yes, Bhante, the monks replied. The awakened one said this. What is this eight-spoke path of the awakened? It is here as follows wise understanding, wise thoughts, wise speech, wise behavior, wise living, wise practice, wise awareness, and wise meditation. And what is this wise understanding, monks? That is, knowing what is tension, knowing the cause of tension, knowing the release from tension and knowing the path to release the tension. This is called wise understanding. And what is this wise intention or wise thinking? That is, monks, the thought of letting go, the thought of non-anger, and the thought of harmlessness. This is called wise thinking. And what is wise speech? That is, abstaining from false speech, abstaining from spiteful speech, abstaining from unkind speech, abstaining from senseless talk. This is called wise speech. And what is wise behavior? that is, abstaining from hurting living beings on purpose, abstaining from taking what is not given, abstaining from sexual misconduct. This is called wise behavior. What is wise living? That is, a righteous meditator abandons wrong modes of living, 
and shapes a life by right modes of living. That means no hurt coming directly to any living beings. This is called wise living. Here, monks, what is this wise practice? It is for the yet unarisen, unfavorable, unwholesome states of mind. One develops the desire not to give rise to them through inspired practice continually devoting one's mind to it, undertaking this and living in this way. And as for already arisen unfavorable, unwholesome states of mind, one develops the desire to let them go through inspired practice, continually devoting one's mind to it, undertaking it and living in this way. As for yet unarisen, wholesome states of mind, one develops the desire to give rise to them through inspired practice, continually devoting one's mind to it, undertaking it, and living in this way. As for already present, wholesome states, one develops the desire to sustain them for their increase, growth, maturation, development, and culmination. Through inspired practice, continually devoting one's mind to it, undertaking it, and living in this way. This is called wise practice. What is wise awareness? Here, monks, one meditates, resting one's awareness on the body, knowing it as only body, intent, fully conscious and present, letting go of tensions and distractions, resting one's awareness on sensations, knowing them as only sensations, intent, fully conscious and present, letting go of tensions and distractions, resting one's awareness on mind, knowing it as only mind, intent, fully conscious and present, letting go of tensions and distraction, resting one's awareness upon mental states, knowing them as only mental states, intent, fully conscious and present, letting go of tensions and distraction. This is called wise awareness. And what is wise meditation, Samma Samadhi? Here, monks, disengaging oneself from the senses and letting go of unwholesome mental states attended by thinking and imagination with the joy and happiness born of letting go. One understands and abides in the first level of meditation. Then, with the calming of thinking and imagining, with inner tranquilization, the mind becoming unified, unattended by thinking or imagination, with joy and happiness born of mental collectedness, one understands and dwells in the second level of meditation. By the calming of excited joy for steady awareness, present and fully comprehending, experiencing happiness within one's body, that which the awakened ones describe as steady presence of mind, this is a pleasant place to be. One understands and abides in the third level of meditation, leaving behind the notions of happiness and unhappiness, unattached to pleasant experienced and unstirred by unpleasant experiences. With the earlier settling of distractions or heaviness of mind, 
with neither distress nor excitement, purified by unmoving presence. One understands and abides in the fourth level of meditation. This is called wise meditation. And so here, this was the Eightfold Path, as it is commonly known. So now you know it. And one more sutta this morning. This is from the Numbered Discourses to Mahanama on Arya Samadhi. These are six different modes of being, modes of living, of people that have understood the Dhamma to a certain extent. And these can also be used uh, for us as objects of recollection to uplift the mind. Once the Awakened One was living with the Sakyans in Kapilavattu, at the banyan tree hermitage. Kapilavattu was the birth, birth town of the Buddha. So he's home. Then Mahanama, the Sakyan, went to him, who's a cousin of the Buddha, paid loving respects, sat down to the side and asked, Bhante, one who is an Arya, an awakened person, a wise meditator, one who has arrived at the fruit, we saw the path and the fruit yesterday, and understands the teaching. How does that person live? How does that person frequently meditate? Mahanama. This is how one who has arrived at the fruit, who understands the teaching, lives and frequently meditates. Here, an Arya, a wise meditator, often recalls the truth finder in this way. And this is the Buddha Vandana, the homage, the qualities of the Buddha. The exalted one is an Arahant, perfectly all awakened, endowed with knowledge and conduct, happy knower of the world, unsurpassed guide for those who seek self-mastery, teacher of devas and humans, awaken and bless. We get to realize this through our own direct experience. In this way, whenever this Arya and wise meditator recalls the truth finder, for that time that meditator's mind is not overwhelmed by outward desires, is not overwhelmed by anger, and it is not overwhelmed by confusion. For that time, because of their consideration for the Tathagata, the Buddha, his mind, their mind is straight and uplifted. With a straight and uplifted mind, this wise meditator knows and experience, experiences the meaning, knows and experiences the Dhamma knows and experiences the natural gladness of Dhamma. From that gladness, bliss arises in the mind. From that blissful mind, the body becomes calm. Calm in body, one experiences happiness. With a happy mind comes samadhi, collectedness. This Arya and wise meditator is one who lives harmoniously amongst the agitated, friendly amongst the hostile. Having come upon the stream of the Dhamma, one cultivates remembering the Buddha. At other times, this Arya and wise meditator often recalls the Dhamma in such a way. Well explained is the Blessed One's teaching directly visible, immediate, inviting, leading upwards, to be experienced by the wise for oneself. In this way, whenever this wise meditator recalls the Dhamma 
for that time that meditator's mind is not overwhelmed by sense desires. It is not overwhelmed by anger nor by confusion. For that time, because of their consideration for the Dhamma, their mind is straight and uplifted. With a straight and uplifted mind, this wise meditator knows and experiences the meaning, knows and experiences the Dhamma, knows and experiences the natural gladness of Dhamma. From that gladness, bliss arises in the mind. From that blissful mind, the body becomes calm. Calm in body, one experiences happiness. With a happy mind comes collectedness. This Arya and wise meditator is one who lives harmoniously amongst the agitated, friendly amongst the hostile. Having come upon the stream of the Dhamma, one cultivates remembering the Dhamma. At other times, this Arya and wise meditator often recalls the Sangha in this way. Good is the practice of the awakened one's disciples. Straight is the practice of the awakened one's Sangha. Wise is the practice of the awakened one's Sangha. Meaningful is the practice of the awakened one's Sangha. That is the four pairs of people, the eight kinds of persons. The Sangha of the Awakened One is worthy of support, worthy of hospitality, of generosity and respect, an unsurpassed field of goodness for the universe. In this way, whenever this wise meditator remembers the Sangha, for that time, that meditator's mind is not overwhelmed by sense desires, nor by anger, nor by confusion. For that time, because of their consideration for the Sangha, anyone who is practicing this path, his mind, their mind is straight and uplifted. With a straight and uplifted mind, this Arya and wise meditator knows and experiences the meaning, knows and experiences the Dhamma, knows and experiences the natural gladness of Dhamma. From that gladness, bliss arises in the mind. From that blissful mind, the body becomes calm. Calm in body, one experiences happiness. With a happy mind comes collectedness. This Arya is one who lives harmoniously amongst the agitated friendly amongst the hostile. Having come upon the stream of the Dhamma, one cultivates remembering the Sangha. At other times, this Arya and wise meditator often recalls their own good behavior, which is unbroken, unbreached, constant, flawless, liberating, recommended by the wise, unspoiled and leading directly to samadhi. In this way, whenever this wise meditator recalls their own good conduct, for that time that meditator's mind is not overwhelmed by desires, nor by anger, nor by confusion. For that time, because of their consideration, for their own good behavior or virtue, their mind is straight and uplifted. With a straight and uplifted mind, this wise meditator knows and experiences the meaning, knows and experiences the Dhamma, knows and experiences the natural gladness of Dhamma. From that gladness, bliss arises in the mind. From that blissful mind, the body becomes calm. Calm in body, one experiences happiness. With a happy mind comes samadhi. This 
Wise meditator is one who lives harmoniously amongst the agitated, friendly amongst the hostile, having come upon the stream of the Dhamma, one cultivates remembering their own good virtue. At other times, a wise meditator often recalls one's own charity and generosity in this way. Such a delight it is for me, such a wonderful gain it is for me, that amongst beings overwhelmed by sticky, selfish desires, I live the house life with a heart free from sticky, selfish desires, giving liberally, open-handedly, delighting in letting go, always ready to help, and taking delight in sharing. In this way, whenever this Arya and wise meditator recalls their own charity, for that time, that meditator's mind is not overwhelmed by sense desires, nor by anger, nor by confusion. For that time, because of their consideration for their own charity, for their own generosity, their mind is straight and uplifted. With a straight and uplifted mind, this Arya and wise meditator knows and experiences the meaning knows and experiences the Dhamma, knows and experiences the natural gladness of Dhamma. From that gladness, bliss arises in the mind. From that blissful mind, the body becomes calm. Calm in body, one experiences happiness. With a happy mind comes Samadhi. This wise meditator is one who lives harmoniously amongst the agitated, friendly amongst the hostile, having come upon the stream of the Dhamma, one cultivates remembering their own generosity. And on this very uplifting sutta, I will simply conclude with a very short passage which describes uh, the four kinds of progress in this path of meditation that the Buddha taught. And this is Sariputta explaining to the Buddha why he has such confidence in, in him and the teaching but this is only a small part that explains the four kinds of progress. Also unsurpassed is the Blessed One's way of teaching Dhamma in regard to the modes of progress, which are four, painful progress with slow comprehension, painful progress with quick comprehension, pleasant progress with slow comprehension, and pleasant progress with quick comprehension. In the case of painful progress with slow comprehension, progress is considered poor on account of both painfulness and slowness. In the case of painful progress with quick comprehension, progress is considered poor on account of painfulness. In the case of pleasant progress with slow comprehension, progress is considered poor on account of slowness. In the case of pleasant progress with quick comprehension, pleasant progress is considered excellent on account of both pleasantness and quick comprehension. 
This is the unsurpassed teaching in regards to the modes of progress. And why am I saying this? Well, it is your choice. You can take the highway or the slow way. <laughs> you can smile more and more and try to be happy and this will really boost your meditation. This will be the fast track. This will be the fast progress with quick comprehension. And leave behind all these uh, things that are creating us problems and smile and here the Buddha is explaining it so wonderfully. Well, Sariputta, but the Buddha also explains this. And this practice is about pleasant progress with quick, quick comprehension. This is what I wish for you. <laughs> and uh, do not worry about the rest. Simply smile and uh, continue practicing with an uplifted mind. And this will be very helpful and very pleasant. So on this, I wish you wonderful meditation.